All right, students, so here we are. We're gonna go into part two and create our amortization table for this project here. Now, before we do that, if you're one of those students that's gonna go from uh, a community college onto a four-year college, or you found this on YouTube and you're doing a four-year degree, just copy these rows here, create some space, add two more rows, edit one for junior, one for senior, and figure out how much you can take in your junior, senior year, figure out the terms of distribution, uh, the dates of distribution, and off you go. All right, so here we go. First of all, let's go ahead and name this, um, let's name this sheet accordingly, all right? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna right click, I can rename and I'll paste in amortization table. So now I've named that sheet amortization table. If you're one of my students, you need to be following along with this explicitly. Now we're gonna come in here, we are gonna bring over some balances just so we have them for reference easy on this sheet. But I don't wanna type in the manual amounts because if I go back and make changes to this sheet, I want it to apply, right? So this is my beginning balance. Total amount owed is right here. That is my beginning balance as I start to pay off my loan, is the total amount I owe today. Daily interest rate, if you remember, we calculated that, so we're gonna go grab that. Back here, here's our daily interest rate based on a percentage. You could also have done this based on the amount that's charged per day. You'll see why I did this. And then monthly payment. And for our monthly payment, we're gonna start by kicking in a hundred bucks, all right? So each month for 10 years, I'm gonna pay a hundred. We're gonna see how that impacts the loan. Now, our payment date, if you remember, we're gonna graduate in 2024, and we're going to make an assumption that I'm gonna start paying one month after I graduate. We're not gonna wait that six months, right? Because interest is accruing even more and more if we're waiting, so we don't wanna wait. Now, before we go any further, I wanna point something out. If you're borrowing this money and you can pay any of it back while you're in school, do it, all right? As that movie says, you wanna do it, go ahead and do it. And the reason why you wanna do that is because the more you pay down here, it's like paying it back for free. Yes, our unsubsidized are earning interest, but if we're paying down these subsidized, I'm not sure which gets paid down first. I assume the first amount you borrow, this would be paid down first, okay? But the more we can pay that down, the less we owe when we start making payments for 10 years. I'm talking about get rid of that coffee each day and pay $25 a month towards your student bills. Anything is gonna impact, because remember, we're not going to be earning even simple interest on that money we pay back while we're in school, okay? So now that we've done this, I'm going to go ahead and fill this down. I have a sequence or a series here, and what should happen is it should put the first date of each month through my 10 years, which is 120 payments, folks, 120 payments, be glad it's not a house. Some of you may remember that's 360. So anyway, there we go. Our beginning balance, this is going to equal this amount up here. Okay. So that's my beginning balance. Now we're going to have to do some absolute cell references here at some point. Here our payment is always going to equal this and watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make sure this doesn't iterate as I fill down. So I'm gonna make it absolute. That way when I fill this down, okay, it fills down that amount. It doesn't iterate to, to B5 and find nothing in B5, okay? Now let me undo that real quick. Now we need to calculate our interest. We're gonna skip principal for a minute and calculate our interest. Well, and actually, I just noticed we wanna move these down. Sorry, we wanna move these down to payment one, okay? We're gonna calculate our interest. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to say that this is going to equal that formula days. And then if you remember, here I get a little hint. If this is confusing you, use the, um, the functions dialog box, okay? So end date. Well, the end date is going to be the day I make my payment, 
my interest is going to end accruing for this period, for this one month period. Then notice I need a comma and then my start date. That's why I put the 7 1 date here. Okay. Now, if I do this, I'm just going to show you that what we get is you're going to see dollar signs. And you're like, Eric, wait a minute. This is not dollar signs. This is days. But remember, we're going to add to this to calculate our interest. Okay. So I'm going to bring up that formula again and we're going to add to that. Well, we know the number of days. What are we going to add to that? Well, we're going to multiply, actually. We're going to multiply this by our daily interest rate, B3. And as I fill this down, I don't want this to iterate down, so I'm going to make that absolute as well. And then, finally, I'm going to multiply that by my beginning balance. So essentially, simple interest is going to accrue for this 30-day period, okay? Now, let me be clear. If you are an expert, please comment on this. If you can lead me someplace, uh, if it's not accruing monthly, but we're going to make this assumption that it is accruing monthly, okay? It's not just accruing over the life of the loan divided by the number of months that we're paying it back. So here we go. At this point, what we've done is we've figured out our days. We're multiplying the days by the daily interest rate, and we're going to multiply that by our initial or principal balance. And by doing that, we see that this month, my interest is going to be 87.37 on this amount. Now, how do we calculate the principal? Well, the principal is calculated simply by taking equals our payment minus our interest. Now, do you see a problem with this? Do you remember back? Let's go look at this. DF minus FA, just in case you didn't see it. Our principal, the amount that's going to go to reduce our beginning balance is $12.63. Let's go back and look at loan information here for a minute because this is going to be valuable. Notice, I can make minimum payments of 50 bucks, and you're probably hearing about students that might be doing this. They might be, um, you know, income-based payments. You know, they, they don't have a high enough income to make their whole payment, so they're not making their whole payment. We're going to see this could end up in trouble. However, we are making our payment. We're not making the minimum. We're making a $100 payment. I'm going to go ahead and make this an accounting function just so we know that that's dollars. This is percent. That's dollars. So our ending balance, this is going to equal our beginning balance minus the principal amount. That amount reduces our beginning balance, okay, or our principal amount. So we'll do that, and we can see we've taken a little bit off the loan. That means that next month, my assumption that I'm making is that next month, our interest is going to be calculated on our new principal amount or our ending balance. So there's that, okay? Now from here, if I did this right, and we're going to see if I did, I should be able to fill this down and not get any errors. And I should see a reduction, a small reduction in interest because my beginning balance is reduced. And we do see that. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and fill this down a little bit to see what happens. If you notice, it's continuing to reduce. My principal is going up a little bit. Notice there's some variation in how many days, you know, 30, 31 you know, 28 here. That's why we're seeing a variance of there. And then what I'm going to do is just continue to fill that down. Now, as I fill that down in 3034, here's what you're going to notice. You're going to notice that it is going down. It is going down a little bit each month. Well, why is it going down so little? Well, because we have to, according to what I read, pay the interest before any is applied to principal. And so with just a hundred bucks, we're not paying much in principal. So the principal is going down. We can see that this amount is going down. And thus, ah, oh, you mean after 10 years, if I'm only paying a hundred bucks, 
Here's how much I owe. Now, here's where people are getting into trouble. They're only paying that $50 minimum. So watch what happens. I change this to 50, and because I have absolute value, my payments change. Now what you notice is my principal is actually, okay, an additional amount that's applied. Notice my beginning balance is going up because my payment is less than my interest. So this is an assumption I made that I'm not sure if it's 100% correct is the fact that at this point, if I am not paying at least the interest, okay? So what you see here, folks, is you wanna pay at least the interest and then your principal's not affected, but at least you're paying the interest, right? But what that is, is we would pay the interest if we paid just the 87 at the end of 10 years, we're still gonna owe 20 grand. We just saw that, right, with our 100. But here, this becomes an addition to my beginning balance, and I've made the assumption that interest is going to be, again, accrue for that month based on the beginning balance. This is where people are getting into trouble. Notice what happens. I've only paid my 50 bucks, and now instead of 20 grand, I owe 26 thousand dollars what's the moral of this story people at least pay the interest okay now let's see what happens if i can pay two hundred dollars a month on my loan for 10 years notice this goes to 200 now look what happens to the principal now i'm paying down the principal at about 100 115 you know to start and notice the principal amount is going up as the balance the interest um accruing on the on the balance each month. The balance is going down, the interest is growing down, and it goes up. So let's see it. if at $200, we've paid this off. And the answer is no. We still owe 2,800 bucks. So maybe at this point I find the 28 and I pay it off, but maybe I wanna figure out how much I need to pay in order to pay it off in 10 years. Now, because we don't have a simple compounding formula that we could apply a goal seek to here, okay, we're gonna just do some basic logic and say, okay, let's see what happens. We wanna look at our ending balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bring our ending balance up to here. I'm gonna say that this cell, this G cell equals our ending balance. And we wanna figure out how to get that ending balance to zero, okay? So this is our ending balance with $200 payments. Let's see what happens if we go to 250. 250 is too much, 225. 225 is too much, let's tie 220. Um, still too much, how about 215? Well, 215 gives me a positive, I still owe, so I know it's someplace in between. Let's split the difference again. 215 and 50 cents, ah, 215 and 58 cents? Well, we're getting close, right? So let's try 215 and 80 cents. What we knew was 216? Oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. Sorry, let's look at this again. So 215, uh, 216, let's try 220 again. Oops, sorry, a little off late in the day. So it's definitely 215, 220, 218. 93, ooh, we're getting close, 219. You know what, let's just stop there, 219. If you wanted to go further, you could take 219 and 50 cents and see where you get. Looks like I'm paying too much, 218.75. We can get close, we can figure out the exact amount just by changing that monthly, all right? Not as easy to do a goal seek on this. I can do a quick formula that would give this, but it's past this class. Folks, I hope this gives you an idea of what happens to your loan, especially if you're not paying it. Now, I also read that when over the pandemic, if you all remember the pandemic, people weren't paying their loans, but in fact, the interest was still accruing, okay? So if you weren't paying anything, your interest was still accruing on those loans, and we saw what happened if we only paid 50 bucks in 10 years, we owed six grand more. So imagine if we didn't pay anything on this loan, the interest gets added each month. Now, again, let me rephrase, 
This may not be correct that it's added each month. It may be added on an annual basis uh, each day, et cetera. But you notice if I went 10 years without paying on my loan, I am in serious trouble. This is how folks are getting way out on their loans. I hope this helps, folks. This gives you some great opportunities to learn more about Excel in a real life situation. And I hope it helps you understand exactly how much money you're borrowing and the value for that money. All right, take care.